John, I know you love John Stewart. <laughs> Your buddy. Of course. <laughs> of course. Last night, he took a look at the situation in Libya and had some interesting comparisons to history. The People's Revolt in Libya, a country possessing a rare combination of massive oil reserves, widespread poverty, and a bat leader who on a good day resembles a wax figure of Danny Trejo that's been left out in the sun. <laughs> what would happen if Jim Henson had made a Muppet version of Prince? <laughs> Asleep, by the way, on a caftan, he appears to have borrowed from Broadway legend Tyne Daly. <laughs> resembles a 1991 Lionel Richie right after he had taken a quick peek <laughs> right after he had taken a quick peek inside the Ark of the Covenant uh, we, uh, seriously, uh, we have like a hundred of these and I gotta try and get them out <laughs> and they were all good all right we're joined now by Richard Whitmire author of the Bee Eater the story about Michelle Ree's uh, trials and travails here with the Washington DC school system uh, Richard thanks for joining us well thanks for having me on so a lot of very interesting education news uh, uh, this week uh, that directly relates to the stuff you were writing about. Uh, uh, the first thing I want to hit on is what we've just seen in the city of Providence, Rhode Island, where the, the school board has actually put out layoff notice to every teacher uh, in, in, in the school system, not because they're all going to be laid off, but because they are facing such a budget crisis that they know that they may have to lay off some teachers and they want to have the flexibility about uh, who to lay off. What, what, what do you make of this controversy? Well, I think with these budget cuts, we're seeing some acceleration, if you will, of some reforms that were tried out here in Washington, D.C., under Michelle Rhee, which is why I undertook this book. I thought that what she was doing here would play out on the national scene in the future, and I, I think that's what's happening here, especially with this issue of if you have to fire teachers, and of course nobody wants to do this, but if you have to fire teachers, should it be the last hired? Richard, you said in, in your book, and you had a column in the Washington Post talking about the fact that you really can't fire your way out of these problems, and perhaps that there was a version of Michelle Rhee's plan that would have worked if she had toned things down a bit. Where do you see that three-and-a-half-year example of Michelle Rhee? You know, what is the biggest lesson that if you were a school superintendent in a failing urban district that you can take from what she tried to do? <coughs> Well, I think if, if you are a superintendent of a failing urban district, then you may have to take very seriously what she did because she pushed teacher quality harder and faster than anyone has done. And she dismissed teachers that uh, were found to be ineffective either by principals or through an evaluation system at a rate that's never been done. And by my research, going school to school, finding out which schools made progress and which didn't, what I found was that the schools were making progress had aggressive principals who swapped out staffs, lower performing staffs for better staff. So it sounds rough, but uh, she was on the right path here. But, but ultimately, the, 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 there's such vitriol towards her uh, that you hear in, in, in Washington. I mean, she, she's, I, I understand you, you had, an, uh, you had a, uh, an event at one of the bookstores in town and you, you, you were confronted yourself with this, even by people who haven't read your book. I mean, what, what what, what is it that, that caused such a strong reaction against what she was trying to do if, in fact, as, as you document, she did clearly show some results? Well, the, the, thing that, the thing about Michelle Rhee you have to keep in mind is that a lot of reformers have been talking about these things for a number of years. Uh, they've been talking about ways to get rid of ineffective teachers. They've been talking about contracts where perhaps higher performing teachers would get higher pay. They've been talking about closing schools. What, what made the difference with Michelle Rhee is that she came in and actually did these things. And not only did she do them, but you can show academic gains as a result of doing them. And because of that, I think she's stirred up antipathies that, that you've never seen before. She is uh, despised by a lot of people, and it's very important to them to prove that she was wrong. Richard, we're potentially going to see this discussion, this debate on the federal level. President Obama has said that he's going to seek to uh, uh, overhaul No Child Left Behind. That's something he wants to do this year. He talked about in the State of the Union. What do you think his approach will be to improving teacher quality? You know, he's going to have resistance from Democrats and Republicans. How do you expect that to play out? Well, I think there's a lot of momentum on, on having realistic evaluations of teachers, and we've seen that. Uh, in the first years of the Obama administration. 
uh, where they've offered incentive grants to states that previously wouldn't consider doing that, and now they're doing that. So I, I think this is the core of, of everything. Those, if we think we have ineffective teachers, how do we identify them? If, if school chiefs need to lay off teachers, how do they identify the teachers who should be laid off so that the, perhaps the younger, more effective teachers get to stay? So I think a lot will revolve around uh, teacher evaluation that works, and I think I think the Obama administration is on the right path with that one, and I would expect to okay. see that play out in the legislation. Okay, we, we only have about 30 seconds left, but I've got to ask you about uh, the American Federation of Teachers uh, coming out now saying they're willing uh, uh, to, to look at ways to get merit pay and, 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 and to actually fire lower-performing teachers. Is this a sea change we're seeing from the teachers' unions? You know, uh, Randy Weingarten is a very forward-looking uh, labor leader, and I, I admire her for that, and she definitely says the right things. I, what I always look for, though, in what she says is what's actually going to play out in the next year or two years, and how much is just being put off in the, in the future. And I think, you know, she's talked about getting rid of ineffective teachers before. The real thing, what's coming to a crunch, as you've pointed out, are, are the firings that are coming up. Richard Whitmire, thank you so much for joining us. That's all the time we have for John Carl up on Capitol Hill. I'm Karen Travers. Tune in on Monday.